Don't worry, I'm not sick or anything. But today I'm not really going to be preaching. Everyone thinks I'm sick or something. Uh, that's what somebody thought. I do think I have always stuff. I'm a hypochondriac. That's where Lila gets it from. But I just want to share with you, we are doing this pretty cool series called Everyone on Mission. And if you were here last week, we all started with Acts chapter 1, verses 8. And follow along on the, on the screen. This is what it says. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses, Jerusalem and all the Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so we're doing this series that talks about everybody being on mission. And the mission that we're looking at is the mission that Jesus Christ put on his disciples, and that was to be his witnesses, which means to testify or to tell others about what we've seen, about what we've heard, and what we all know about Jesus Christ, and that we cannot do this without the power of of the Holy Spirit. So these were Jesus' final words before he was taken up to heaven. He says, listen, I've taught you everything that I know, and now it's time for you and to go and do the same thing, but you can't do this without the Holy Spirit. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, is what is the mission? Like, who are we supposed to tell these people to? You know, who are we supposed to tell people about? What are the people? And, and he continues on in this verse. He says this. He says, that Jesus says to go into Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And if you look at the book of Acts, it, it, it follows this outline, and some commentators believe this is like the book of Acts. Chapters 1 through 7 looks at Jer Jerusalem, and this is the disciples being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the first seven chapters all deal with what's happening right in Jerusalem. Then chapters 8 and 9 deal with them being spread out to Judea and Samaria. And then chapters 10 through 28 is after Paul's conversion. And then literally how he goes on his missionary journey and then until he gets to the Roman Empire. So he says, Jesus says, this mission is for people in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so some people will agree with me and some won't. But when I read this and I think, practically what that looks like as a church, I see Jesus, he's calling us to witness locally. So I would think about that as our Jerusalem. And so it's not necessarily your hometown, because I'm from New Jersey, but right now, the last few years in this season of my life, God has called me to be in Edinburgh. So Edinburgh would be my Jerusalem, and some of you aren't from Edinburgh, but you've lived here maybe for a short period of time or a long period of time. This place today, I would look at that as our Jerusalem locally right now, it's Edinburgh. And when you look further into it, it's like the, um, the Judea and Samaria. Some people would consider that our county, like Midlothian, and also our country, which would be the UK, all of Great Britain. So we want to do stuff locally. We want to do stuff nationally. But then he says, go to the ends of the earth. And, and that's self-explanatory, every place else. Every place that's not locally, every place that's not nationally, to the ends of the earth literally means take this message to everywhere that you go. So whatever you choose to believe, one thing is certain, that Jesus is telling his disciples, he said this, I want you to get this. Don't mess this up. Don't keep this message, even as we heard in that song, don't keep this message to yourself where we just get satisfied singing songs and, and playing church. But he said, I want you to go and tell everybody. I want you to go and tell everybody. So as a church, this is how we look at missions. So in our church finances, if you ever want to see the books, we're a charity, so we have nothing to hide, and, and we've got accountants that come and audit everything that we do. And so we look at things nationally, we look at things uh, locally, and we look at things for. So our approach, I think, is like the best of both worlds. We want to invest our time, our energy, and resources into all areas, locally, nationally, and foreign, and I want us to have an impact everywhere. So in 2014 to 2015, Bridge Family Church, we give 30% of our tithes and our offerings to missions, locally, nationally, and foreign. So that means everything that comes into the offering, I ask Tina to just take off 30%, and what we want to do is just give that straight to missions. We want to be a church that's consistently and constantly giving to all areas of the world. So as a church that averages about 25 people on a regular basis, 30% of our giving 
was 3,711 pounds and 39p given to local, national, and foreign missions. I don't know about you guys, but that's a lot of money just to give to missions. And so I want to look at today, and I just want to share with you guys just an update. That's why I'm sitting down, because I want you guys to be excited, and I don't want to get all preachy, and you got to know that to sit down in this chair is like hard for me, so I still can't like hold in my hands, but I like it. It's comfortable. But I just want you guys to, to be excited about what God has called us to, and as we take this year look at what is God using us for locally, nationally, and how we are reaching to the ends of the world. So I want to look at nationally first. So some of you might or might not know this, but Bridge Family Church, we're part of the Assemblies of God worldwide, and the Assemblies of God is the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. So when you come to Bridge Family Church, we want you to understand that we are part of this fraternity of brotherhood. I don't know if we, what you want to call it, but we are part of a large organization that's the largest Pentecostal denomination in the entire world. So there are over 30, uh, 384,000 ministers in over 212 countries and around 67 million church partners and members. Think about that. The Assemblies of God makes a massive impact in the world. Bridge Family Church makes up 0.000000375 of that 67 million. Isn't that crazy? Woohoo! One day we'll make it hopefully to 0.05%, something like that. <clears throat> so that is part of what we do nationally, um, part of the Assemblies of God. So if we look at Assemblies of God here in Great Britain or in the UK, there's over 600 churches all over Great Britain, which in for the Assemblies of God terms would be Wales, England, and Scotland. So over 600 churches. Scotland has around 55 churches. And so what we do as a church to help out nationally is that we design flyers if you look at almost any a lot of the events that we've put on for youth and for like even as the as the um the, the, the movement andrew smith which is our area leader consistently calls on us and says listen we want you guys to put a video together we want you guys to put the flyers together and julie and i have designed the youth flyers for like the last six or seven years so that's one thing that we do for a season we're the ones who are responsible for the website we were we've worked on video promos Mike and Tina are currently on the leadership team of iKids, which is the kids program for the Assemblies of God. And so they do camps throughout the year in the summertime, around Easter time. They really want to invest in, 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 in the next generation of Assemblies of God kids. And so Mike and Tina, so two of your church people are part of that national movement helping out with kids. After six years of being on the Youth Alive team, Julie and I just stepped down this past November so the Youth Alive, any, every year we would host a conference. I had about three to 400 teenagers that would come in all over Scotland to just hear great speakers. And it was just a really good thing. And, and again, we've designed the flyers and video promos for all that. We've literally been called on the night before and said, hey, we want you to run to media. We want you to run the media for certain things. And I love it because as one of the newest churches in Scotland, they still come to us to ask us for help. Why? Because nationally is so much bigger than just taking care of what we're doing locally. We need to take care of stuff locally, but we've got to look at outside and say, listen, we are much bigger than that. So we want to encourage you, if there's ever anything you'd look to, like to get into, talk to Mike and Tina, talk to us, how you can get involved in helping out with the youth, or if projects come up for us to help out or time to serve, even at our area family conference in October, that's where that picture's from, in October they put on the, a family conference, which is for uh, people all over Scotland, if you're part of the Assemblies of God. So we go to this national day, and this time it's happening on Halloween, October 31st. It happens in Govan. So a bunch of us will get into cars, drive over to Glasgow. J Graham and Jackie aren't here, but they bought like KFC enough to feed the whole church, thinking it was just for two people. It was a lot of KFC. So you just have a really good time there. And we've got John Partington, which is our national leader coming, and then Alan Hewitt, who is a pastor of a church down south. And so we are also a small church plant who loves to help out church plants. A few years ago, great friends of ours who are part of the launch team at Bridge Family Church, we gave them about 400 pounds and we bought them an iPad as they started their church in Fife. So they helped us for a long time and, they were, and we said, listen, what can we do to help somebody? And we want to take care of church plants nationally. 
I was just on the phone with Christian Thorpe, who is in charge of the Assemblies of God uh, Great Britain church planting movement. And we were on Skype on Wednesday morning. And I said, listen, I've got some national money left over that I want to do something with. Help me find a church plant, maybe it's in Scotland or some place else, that we want to bless. It might not be a lot of money, but 150 pounds to somebody who's looking for help is a lot of money. You know what I mean? So this is what we're doing on a national level to make a huge, huge difference. Um, Julie and I are going down to London, not just for a holiday, but we are leaving Lila with my mother-in-law. So there's a one-day church planting day just happening with Nikki Gumbel, and so we're a church plant who's blessed enough to help other church plants. You know, some guys at this stage in ministry, I know it's because of the, the, the support and the help that comes from America. That's why we're able to do what we're doing. But some guys right now are like praying and asking, God, what can we do? We're never going to make it. But we're able to say and freely give and say, God, what project can you send our way for us to be a resource to? So that's what we're doing nationally as a church. So I want to take on, this is going to take some more time because I'm really excited about this. I want you guys to be excited about what is happening here at Bridge Family Church on a local basis. So in order for me to kind of do that, before I do that, I'm going to show you this two-minute video clip of about a year from April of last year to about May of this year. What has God been using Bridge Family Church for? So pay attention to the screen. Let me take some time and share with you guys what Bridge Family Church is doing locally to make a difference and be on the mission that Jesus Christ is talking about, so uh, Jesus Christ is telling us about. So one of the first things I want to highlight is our toddler group, which we call TAP. So in the past year, TAP, which you can see some pictures here, happens every Friday morning. And we've grown so large since last January, we had to split into two different sessions. One happening at 9 a.m. and then at 11 a.m. And, um, and, and so we've given out in the last year over 460 bananas. We've had to slice and cut about 92 blocks of cheese. We've served around 720 bags of tea, around 720 cups of coffee. We have given away over 1.5 stones of raisins. We have bought and used over 50 quarts of milk. We've held 92 sessions. We've moved the toys in and out of the cupboard and around the room over 180 times. And every week we connect with an average of 90 people. Think about that. You've never been to a toddler group. Maybe you're busy and we completely understand. But if you ever want to see what Bridge Family Church is doing throughout the week, every Friday morning we are connecting with this community. And so it's pretty amazing when you think about that. And we have our Kids Fest off of that. 
Like God is using us to make a difference in the world. So what else are we doing as a local church here? Well, last year we did Christianity Explored for the first time in Starbucks. They held their store hours open longer for us, and they gave it to me for absolutely nothing. We just had to buy coffee, and we, we held Christianity Explored. And we had one visitor just kind of come off the streets. We never saw her again. She came out that one time. But it was cool to see somebody just randomly show up. At the men's barbecue last year, so the same event that we had that's happening next week that we had last year, we had 39 people, and I remember this place being packed and, and thinking, wow, man, we just should serve food every week because if that's going to fill the church in, maybe we'll do it. So um, I don't know if we'll be bigger, smaller next year, but I knew last year, again, we had 39 people. people. So over at the choir, if you guys have ever come to a concert, we've done four concerts. I think four concerts now, Mike, right? Yes. Four concerts. We've had, um, in the last year, at our, at our two concerts, over 100 people show up, and there was 1,920 minutes of rehearsal time has gone into putting on the Edinburgh Children's Choir. What else have we done here as a local church? Our Thanksgiving. Who is here for Thanksgiving? Remember Thanksgiving? Just an amazing time. We served that day 177 pies. We gave out eight turkeys, tons of veggies. I don't calculate veggies because I'm not a big veggie fan, so I kind of gross, got grossed out thinking about it. Um, we had about, se I think it was 71 people in attendance, no, 70 people in attendance, and we had 33 first-time guests. Many of those guests, were, that's the first time ever coming to any type of church event. That's not counting the ones that came the previous year. This is first time ever come to a Bridge Family Church event. 33 first-time guests. We've done second Saturdays, so we've gone, we've handed out hundreds of pieces of candy, 250 roses, and it has to be over 1,000, but I just figured, just let me be safe, about 1,000 flyers have gone out in our second Saturdays. Who remembers the Minion? Maybe you forgot about the Minion, that when you see the Minion up on the screen, you're like, oh yeah, I can't believe we did that. So my next costume that I'm going to order this week is Olaf. I was trying to go back Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I was going to buy Mickey Mouse, but I'm buying an Olaf because I just think he is awesome. I don't know why, but I, I, I've seen Frozen about a million times with Lila. But every time you see Olaf, I just feel like a little ray of sunshine come over him. I'm like, that guy is cool. So we're going to, so that's what we've done on our second Saturdays. What, what else has Bridge Family Church done this year? An Easter egg hunt. Julie just decided one day, you know what, let's do an Easter egg hunt. Let's just go for it. And we stuffed over 400 eggs, gave out, we, we handed out about 200 Cadbury eggs. We gave away 18 pounds of Jelly Bellies, you know those big things from Costco. And I think we had over 70 people, might have been like 72 people, I forgot to calculate, um, came out to our Easter egg hunt. And not only that, the first time that we've taken something like this, and Julie shared about three minutes about Jesus with those people in the park that showed up. It was pretty amazing. And then we did pictures with Santa Claus. If you were there to help out, there's most of the crew down there. We took this year 23 pictures at Santa Claus. We handed out about 25 stamps and tattoos, and Santa was only peed on twice this year. And so it was a, a really good uh, opportunity. And again, we partnered with a local Starbucks, and they let us in for free, and they say, just buy coffees from us. They actually gave us huge muffins to hand out for the team and people. It was pretty amazing, but it was a good day for us to kind of get out into the community. What else does Bridge Family Church do locally? And I'm almost done. We handed out, a, 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 we had a missions team come just a few weeks ago. Some of you guys would have met some of them. And while they were here, we did tons of things, but what we did was we handed out 200 ice cream bars in the meadows. Those went pretty quickly, but what went even faster is we handed out 196 Krispy Kreme donuts. Those went about 30 minutes. It was pretty amazing. And we handed out flyers. They're just really cool. So the next event that we do, we're gonna hand out Krispy Kreme donuts again because I found them a lot cheaper at Costco. Um, and people just love Krispy Kreme donuts. And so they came in and everyone was asking questions. It was, it was pretty cool to hand out that many invitations that, that afternoon and, and, and just, again, just bridge Jesus Christ to the community. We held our women's brunch that day. That's what that picture's of. And then we had um, Andrea shared her testimony, which is very powerful. We had Terry Ann from a church in Musselboro come through. And five families from the community between toddlers and, and, and the nursery had, had come out to this woman's brunch. And they heard about Jesus, they, they heard about answered prayer and how God is good. Like, and I'm telling you, that, like, that is huge 
for these women to make their way from just something that we do from toddlers in a community to come out the church is massive. I heard a statement a few years ago that people said they put on the toddler group, but hardly anybody ever comes to church. And in my mind, I was determined I will not just run a community group just for the sake of putting on a community thing. There's enough of that that happens. There's people that go to community groups all over the world, uh, all over the city. If we cannot, conf- if we cannot bridge between Jesus Christ and that differentiates our group, then it's not worth me doing forever. But with having people show up to an Easter egg hunt, with having them coming out to messy church, we're we're going to highlight that next year. And to this woman's brunch, God is doing that. And it happens because of Bridge Family Church. We've had countless hours of setup and tear down. For those of you who don't know, we go to storage at 1.30, and we load up the stuff full of our cars, and we come down, we begin setting up, and then we finish. And now we, 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 we mastered the setup. So we're, we're like waiting for like a half hour, 45 minutes before we start praying. So we started praying earlier because we have so many people here. But you know, right now that happens because of our car, Mike and Tina's car, and then Margo and Darcy's car. And God bless Graham and Jackie because for the last few months, they've literally taken the storage stuff away. So we don't have to do that. We can go to our meetings and we can do what we have to do. But you know what? There's going to come a time where we just need more vehicles. I know there's a lot of people who don't drive and, and you can't make it, but, but if there's ever any opportunity, you said, man, I wanna, this is my church and I would love to show up once and pick up the stuff. I would love to help out Graham and Jackie and drop it off. There's plenty for people to do and this is a great way to get involved. Overall, not including Thanksgiving, we had 103 first-time guests come to Bridge Family Church. So Julie said, don't share that statistic because that's very depressing because where do the numbers relate to. Well, I said, well, Julie, I want to show it for a couple reasons. Number one, I want us to understand that people are coming to our church. Think about it. There's a lot of churches who will never see a first-time guest. In this past year, we've seen 103 plus Thanksgiving first-time guests come out to church. So, a lot of those guests, though, are from family members and friends. So, we've had Paul Uliano, who's a great friend. He preached a few months ago. A family from Glasgow that had six had come through our doors. So I wouldn't necessarily count them like as people who had the potential of staying, but they were still first-time guests. Steve and Molly had some friends that came down from Fraserboro that year, and I don't know, maybe the group, they seemed like an army of them, but uh, there was a good crowd of them. So they were first-time guests, but you know, they're they're people who who won't come to the church. So I want to ask us as a church, what about the ones that do come for the very first time, that do live in Edinburgh, you know, why aren't they coming back? Um, Are we doing enough? And I think we do a lot as a church to get them, but is there something that we need to say, hey, do we, should we, you know, I I don't know what the answer, I'm I'm asking you, you know, maybe a rhetorical question or just a question in all sincerity. What can we do? Some people don't want to come back. Maybe something about the church, they're like, you know what, those guys love Jesus too much or they smile and I don't want to come back. Some people are just looking for maybe a large church. And if you go to our website, it seems like a super large church website, but, but it's not. So maybe they come through the doors and they're kind of like, oh, I'm looking for something maybe a little bit larger where I can kind of sneak in and sneak out. Some people think because of the name until they come to the church that maybe Bridge Family Church is, is just all for families. But I want you guys to understand and, and anybody that you're inviting, let them know that we're just not a church about families. The reason that God put that name on our heart is because we want to be a family to people. And when you look at the gospel, when you look at the New Testament, they did things just like a family. And the way we want to run church is not like an organization, and it's not like this, this, uh, this um, fine oiled machine, but it's a place that when people come in, they can call home. I don't know what that's going to look like when we grow, because people always say, oh, you can only do that when you're smaller. And I said, Julie, I am going to fight tooth and nail to figure out a way to keep this as familial as possible no matter how big we get. So we want people to understand that it's not just for families, but this is about people coming to this church. And you know what? The majority of our group are singles that come out to the church. And we love it because it's all shapes and sizes. Go to our website. This is about the family of God. And if you have no family, we want to be your family. Not in a creepy way, but in a good way that says, (laughs) uh, it's all about Jesus.
Um, so I hope I, if you have any questions about that first, let's pray about that as a church and say, God, help us to retain some, help the ones that maybe have come through, come back. If you've been showing up in the past few weeks, we've had a few new guests that have been coming out. Listen, it's our opportunity and we pray, Lord, if you send them to us, we'll do everything we can to love on them. You know what I mean? Like, Lord, send them so we, not just send them so we can have a big church. Who cares about having a big church? Because if people aren't growing, if people aren't connected, if people don't feel like they can engage, then it doesn't matter. And how do we do that? Well, getting people's phone numbers, just meeting up with people for coffee throughout the week. We are a very international church. I love that about Bridge Family Church. We, our makeup is about 50% from Great Britain, 50% from all over the world. And you know what? I love it. Because when you go to heaven, you're not going to have people just from one country. You're going to have people from all over the country, from all countries all over the world. We've been in existence for about two and a half years, and we've seen people from six continents come through our doors. Think about that. In an international city, We've had six continents represented. We've had Africa, we've had Australia, we've had Asia, we've had everywhere. It's come out into this room, and I love it. And so we continue to pray, and for the first time guests that come through, Lord, help us just to be what you need us to be for them. What else have we done as a local church? We saw one baby dedication, and uh, we're going to be praying. Hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll, we'll be baby dedicating another baby. In 10 weeks, we've got left. We're going to be dedicating, well, not right away, but at some point after that, our baby girl, Tessa, who's, who's, who's going to be coming into this world. And um, we've seen actually four salvations. We were calculating that in the car here. I had two salvations, but we've seen four. It might seem low, and we're praying for more, obviously. But you know what? It's, we live in a tough city. We live in a place that people are very shy. People don't, uh, you know, just a little strange sometimes. But the fact that we've had four people want to commit their life to Christ is pretty amazing. So locally, this is everything, mostly everything, that we've done as a church. So I want to take a time just real quickly to talk about the fringe. We've got a couple things happening. One th uh, this summer, we've got uh, Kids Fest coming up, as I shared earlier. We've got Messy Church happening. But also something that's super important is, is we're hosting the fringe. Steve and Molly's son, Mark, who's a comedic, Christian communicator, he's hilarious. We watched his video. I don't know if Steve and Molly think he's funny when some of their jokes are about them. But we've been there and we've seen it. They are just, he, he's, just uh, he's just hilarious. And we're bringing him to the city. We've got, it's so cool because we got the magazine and his name is there with Bridge Family Church. And um, we have a venue number. We're going to get like a board. You know those boards that you see all over the city? It's going to be like, ours is 406A. So anytime you see 406A, know that, that man, that's Bridge Family Church. October 13, 14, and 15, we're going to be handing out flyers. So we're going to need help. You know those mornings? August. August sorry, what did I say? October. Uh, sorry, August. We're going to be on the streets handing out some flyers. It's going to be, I think, only £2.50 in the room, upstairs or across the hall. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I don't know if people are going to come to church. It's not the point from that. But what we're hoping for is that people would realize that as Christians, we can have a good time. Yeah. That we can laugh. We can enjoy ourselves in, in company. And not we don't have to do the things that the world's doing to enjoy ourselves. But that's happening. And also, we have our Connect team. If, if you think to yourself, I don't do enough at the church, or if you ever ask yourself, I, I, I meet a lot of people who leave churches and say, I want to go to a church that's doing something. I want to be involved. And I said, Julie, if every church were to do something like this, I think nobody could sit back and ever say to themselves, there's nothing to do. There is plenty to do in the life of Bridge Family Church. And if you want to get involved more, there's a Connect card on every table. Tick off some of the boxes. Give us your name and your email. And we'll kind of help you and point you to the right direction. But there is plenty to do. And I'll say this, that God is doing something pretty amazing here at Bridge Family Church. I love it. I love the fact that we're so blessed that we're able to do something like this and that we're a church that's in action and that we're moving. Lastly, I want to share about what it looks like to be foreign. Just two or three minutes on this. So we support missions. We believe in foreign missions. And one of the main reasons why is because Bridge Family Church wouldn't exist, number one, without Jesus. Or number two, without God putting a burden on Julie and I's heart to leave home and to come here and plant a church in Edinburgh. Well, the only way that we survive at this stage in our ministry is because we've got about over, oh, we have about 200 churches and families back in America that support us to survive in Edinburgh, to live, to buy groceries, and to get around so that we can be free to do the work that God's called us to. Well, not only are we blessed with just one couple and, and, and a daughter, but also we have Mike and Tina who are blessed with the same process. 
churches and family members support them to be here for absolutely nothing to work full time in the church to make that happen. Margot has the same thing and Darcy has the same thing. We've got a few more people in the works who are looking to come and be a part of what Bridge Family Church is doing absolutely free to come and work and it happens because people and churches just like Bridge Family Church believe in missions. So when missionaries come through our doors, we will support them because we want them to have the same freedom and to have the same impact wherever they're called. But also next week we're going to be hearing from Steve and Molly as they share about their adventures in the Philippines. They spent six weeks in the Philippines, was it six weeks, five weeks in the Philippines? So, uh, five weeks in the Philippines, helped at an orphanage, and they're going to share with us, show us some pictures, I hope, um, probably, most likely, before we break off and eat for our barbecue. And then we're going to see what we can do maybe to sponsor some children in the Philippines and, and, and their mission out there. The following week, how we take care of to the ends of the earth, one way is we're going to have our friend Don Essen, who's one of the trustees at Bridge Family Church. He works for Compassion International. So this is an organization that says, I think you put 20p a day away and you can sponsor a child. And, and I'm still praying about the region of the world that we're going to sponsor together as a church. But it's our way as a church to say, hey, God, we don't want to just take care of local stuff. It's amazing. We don't want to just do national stuff. That's amazing. But what can we do to fulfill your command back in Acts chapter 8 to the ends of the earth? And I must say this as we close. I am so proud of Bridge Family Church. And I want, yeah, give, our, give yourselves, give God a round of applause. We're running 25 today, but a year ago we were about 20 people. And this had all been going at that stage. Think about it. Like, I don't know what churches you've come from, and I have nothing against what other churches are doing. All I can say is, is I know what we're doing. Countless hours, countless resources, countless Cheerios and raisins. I said, come on, guys, let's cal calculate the breadsticks. They said, no, there's too many to count. <laughs> but it's all correlating into connecting our community with a loving God. So when we look at the life of Bridge Family Church and we look at being on mission, there's an opportunity for all of us to be on mission. And I have to say that as I look at our church, I can with confidence say we're on mission. We're making it happen. But one thing is we never, need to, we never want to stop. No matter what God does to us, one thing we, can, we will never be is a church that just takes care of ourselves. But we will always be a church that's focused on mission. Focus on what we're doing locally, nationally, and to the ends of the earth. It's what we're doing. It's what we will continue to do. It's in our DNA. And let's just pray right now that we would say, Lord, help more churches maybe to catch a greater excitement. Think about it. If all churches were on the move, how much of a difference this city, this, this city could be changed with the gospel. There's enough churches all over this world to make it happen. But sometimes we forget. Lord, we just pray that we would never forget. Lord, it's so easy to say here today, oh, this is amazing, this is exciting. But Lord, I believe that at some point in every church's life, they could boast about the same exciting points in their history. But somewhere along the way, Lord, sometimes we lose track or we get off the mission and, and Lord, the, the, the pastor or the team gets distracted by problems and and we get too tired for the mission. But Jesus, I pray that you would protect Bridge Family Church. No matter how many years we are in existence, that everyone would always be on mission. That as a church, God, that we would continue to think of creative ways to connect with our community. Lord, what we're doing works today, Lord, but it might not work in a few years. Thanksgiving is amazing, but Lord, in a year or two, Lord, we might overgrow and have to think of something else. And it doesn't matter the event that we do. Jesus, what's important is that we're connecting with you. God, we pray that you would constantly tweak us, that you would constantly mold us. Lord, that we would always, as a church and as a team, listen to your voice and stay focused on what we need to do, and that is to testify and to be witnesses of what we've seen, of what we heard, and what we know, and that is that Jesus Christ is good, and that you are changing this world. We thank you, God, that we're part of a church that's on mission. We thank you, God, that we are part of a movement that is on mission. 
And Lord, we just pray that our hearts, when we wake up tomorrow morning, when we go back to bed tonight, Lord, would, would be set upon this mission. Those that want to get more involved, Lord, that they would find the way and the energy and the resource to get involved. Lord, that no one could ever sit back and say, I didn't have anything to do. But God, that we would see that there's plenty to do in your kingdom. God, we ask that you would continue to send more workers, Lord, throughout this city. Continue to grow us. Continue to send more help and laborers from America. Continue to call missionaries, Lord. And we just thank you for the privilege that we have to just be a part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.